The Cube at Hadoop Summit 2014 is brought to you by anchor sponsor Hortonworks. We do Hadoop. And headline sponsor Wan Disco. We make Hadoop invincible. We're back here live at Hadoop Summit. They're packing up. We're not, we're not going home until every story gotta, is done. We've got to be careful, John. They're going to put <laughs> us in a box here and ship <laughs> us out in a minute. They're breaking down here. This is our third day of wall-to-wall -wall coverage at uh, Hadoop World. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Kelly. Jeff, let's quickly wrap this up. They're going to boot us out. We don't want to leave. This is where the action is. Uh, your take real quick. I just want to say before we get to the wrap-up, really the uh, MapR, Actian, WAN Disco, um, sponsoring us to get here. Really appreciate it. And of course, Hortonworks for allowing us the space here. Uh, shout out to all you guys. Without your help, we would not be um, allowed in. Of course, Traceda as well. Forgot about those guys. Um, without their sponsorships, we would not be here. Um, Jeff, big story. What's the big top story of the show? The top story of the show, I think, is that, we're getting, that we are on the cusp of this tipping point. Um, clearly, we're hearing a lot more conversations about business outcomes. We're hearing a lot more conversations about uh, from from business from the business side of it, and less about the uh, you know the, the guts of the tech. Although there's plenty of that type of content at the show as well. Um, I think the other big story is is watching the traditional data warehouse vendors try to try to you know tell their story about how they're rel still relevant in this Hadoop focused world. Um, and frankly, I find it kind of kind of fun watching them twist themselves in knots trying to fit. Um, so those are a couple of the big stories, and really just watching some mainstream, you know, more traditional companies using Hadoop, uh, telling their stories here, Sprint, yeah. Coles, and others. Uh, just a really good show, good content, uh, top, some great people. Top story for me, Jeff, is the business side of the, of the equation is exploding. It's, it's really empowering the developers and the community, the technical community, to really accelerate their efforts. You have the big whales here, IBM, Cisco, AT&T, Oracle, they're all here. And the other big story on top of that is the fact that the FUD is lifting. The fog of the FUD and all the, all the BS that's being thrown around, you can obviously see it. MapR is not going out of business, okay? They have 500, <laughs> not even close. They have 500 customers. And you know, you, you ask any, any of these companies, how many employees do you have and how many customers you have, that will tell you the health of their company. So MapR is not going out of business. Cloudera, Cloudera has successfully had an amazing exit for some of their founders, early employees and investors, and now are on a whole nother playing field uh, with their business. So you know, Cloudera has got cruising altitude, they're at their, at their, their pace, and Hortonworks is kind of still on the ground doing the open source game and real, still adding value and staying on, on mission. So, Business is good. Continuity had a great announcement with uh, AT&T. It's a startup in their B round. Chris Wetzel with um, um, co uh, Concurrent um, doing big deals with, the, with cascading technology with big players. So you got the startups and the B round guys successful. You got the growing companies like Hortonworks and Cloudera dominating MapR, continuing to do well. Business is good, and the whales are here. So to me, I think it's a very healthy ecosystem. Uh, absolutely, it's going to be really interesting to watch it go forward. Um, the with, with the big vendors now involved, and you know, the, we, we, the, the Hadoop has gotten their attention, that's, that's for sure. So the question now is, what's the influence of those big, big whales out there? As they, how will they influence the development of the platform? And I think you know, several of our guests have pointed out that really what's critical for the future of Hadoop uh, is to maintain the open source community as a vital and active uh, community of developers and participants, um, and not let some of the, some of the vendor cons um, some of their, their plans uh, unduly influence the direction of Hadoop. Um, that said, you know, having all these vendors here and having a lot of the money flowing in is a good thing as well because it, it's going to enable a lot of development, so. The, the other subtext to this event is uh, the Cloudera story, right? I mean, I didn't recognize one person at Cloudera. Um, I saw a lot of ex-Cloudarians. Well, it's not, but Doug was here, so let's. No, well, he's on stage with you, but you know, at the booth, you know, on the ground. Um, Cloudera is kind of quiet, Obviously, it's not their show. They have their show, which is Hadoop World, that they run with O'Reilly Media, so um, kind of quiet on the Cloudera front. Well, you know, I think, here's my, I'll, I just, I'll just give my take quickly on, on some of those dynamics. I think what's going on, uh, you've got an interesting situation in the Hadoop market because you've got, as we've, you know, we've sized this market, it's a huge opportunity. I mean, this is a 50 billion plus do, uh, million dollar, billion dollar opportunity, excuse me, it's day three, as you can tell. Um, so obviously there's a lot of stake, it's extremely competitive. So we, you've got that, and that, that's not necessarily unique to the Hadoop environment. But when you add the open source component, where you've got a lot of the engineers 
at these different very competitive companies actually working together to some degree in the community. And it's a, it's a fairly small community, relatively speaking. So it's, you know, everyone kind of knows everybody. Um, so there's a lot of personal interaction happening. Uh, when you combine those two elements, extremely competitive and small and personalized, you know, sometimes tempers, tempers can flare and it gets I, a little, it gets a little hot at the, sometimes. The chest pumping and the chest bashing is just kids in the playground. But if you look at the Cloudera Hortonworks thing and the MapR thing, I mean, I think they have their territory. I mean, it's like, well, to that, me, it's like all BS in my mind because Cloudera is successful. Okay? The Intel relationship with Cloudera is fundamental to their business model. They had their kind of liquidity event, they had a great uh, liquidity event and growth capital. Cloudera is now a big company, right? So like they have the Intel relationship, so very successful. I mean, they're, what's wrong with that? They're this, happy. Right, well that's the thing, there is room, there's room for more than one winner in this market. I mean, it's a huge opportunity. That said, there will be somebody who comes up on top and makes the most money, and they all want to be that, that yeah, company. See, see, you know, we, we talk to all of Cloudera's customers and uh, uh, not all of them, but most of their customers and, and some of their competition. And the speculation is that Cloudera is going to be integrated into the Intel uh, software on a chip. That's the, this, the in really putting the efficiencies and we talk about on our, on our last few segments with some of the technical geeks is that there's a lot of work to get done on scale and performance. So my guess is if I'm, if I'm an Intel engineer or manager, I'm thinking to myself, hey, I could really help Cloudera move the ball down the field and help customers by bringing that functionality inside the Intel technology and they talked about roadmap integration on the, on the announcement, so I'd, I would expect to see flower, flowers be blooming off that relationship in probably the next six to 12 months, well, or if not sooner. Yeah, Intel CIO joining the board at, at Cloudera, I mean, I think, yeah. you know, as they just closed that funding round, that huge funding round that was announced a couple months ago, just closed this week. Um, and I think they'd be kind of crazy not to do that. I mean, there's a lot of great stuff that uh, Intel has done around Hadoop, they're, they're commercialized, commercial product didn't kind of take off in the market, but a lot of the hard work, I've known some of the engineers that are, that are you know, working on the security, working on the performance improvements, you know, they're, they're doing some really good stuff, and that's going to definitely help uh, Cloudera, and they'd be crazy not to, do, to integrate that. Yeah, they uh, built a great company. They built, a dur they built what, what Amr Abadal told me his objective was, was to build a durable company. How they got there, it's not the issue. They're there, they did mm -hmm. it, they're working, they're up and running. Hortonworks, on the other hand, different path. But Yarn and, and the data platform that they have has gotten great feedback. Yeah, well I mean look, Hortonworks has, has never deviated from their plan. They know what they want to be. It's not what they want to be when they grow up, they know what they want to be. They want to be about Hadoop and enabling the rest of this ecosystem. Um, and they're sticking to that and they're being successful. I mean, they're, if, you, if you talk to some of their customers, they're, you've got a lot of happy customers. It's enabling other vendors to you know, add value on top of the platform. So there are two different approaches. There's room for both. But again, there will be there will be somebody who comes in first. So Map you know, that's why there's Map a lot R's of competition. doing very well. And then, you know, MapR a, a third approach. You know, they said from the very beginning they weren't concerned about oh, are you open source or you open core? They didn't care what you called it. They were just going out to solve business problems. Um, and their and their and their company uh, customers are are clearly happy with them. Uh, so you know, there's a lot of room in this market. Um, a lot of things happening now. We've got these big big vendors out here. So that'll be interesting. Well, what do you about Actian? Actian's a big surprise to me. Obviously, we love having their CTO on. He is uh, pretty prolific on theCUBE. Um, he makes claims, he backs it up with some rhetoric, and, and, and has use cases to back it up. So he's like the perfect storm for a CUBE mm -hmm. guest. Well, Actian, yeah, I mean, Actian kind of, I don't want to say they came out of nowhere, but there's been a lot of activity at Actian over the last year, year and a half, with the acquisition of Parkcell, the acquisition of uh, per, uh, Pervasive, um, which has enabled them by integrating that with uh, Vectorwise and their other database products and application development tools to build this really end-to-end -end platform. Um, it's impressive what they've done. Uh, they've, the, the, the performance levels that they're able to achieve uh, are significant. Um, the challenge for them is going to be cutting through uh, a lot of the marketing uh, noise that's happening from some of their competitors and some of the, you know, the really big vendors out here, the IBMs and Oracles of the world. Uh, but they've got the product. It's now time they've, they've got to go out and execute. Um, and you know, having uh, you know known some of those guys there, they've got some really smart executives. Um, I think they have a good chance of, of doing just that. Wen Disco, tell me about Wen Disco. Wen Disco, again, another company that's really focused on a really hard problem that delivers a lot of value. If you can solve that problem, um, you know what they do essentially is is allow you to run Hadoop. Uh, with some peace of mind, that it's not going to go down, it's not going to fail. If there is any kind of failure, you'll have automatic failover, you don't have to worry about it, they've got it covered. 
uh, with their uh, nonstop Hadoop and nonstop HBase. Um, the nonstop HBase in particular, I think, is, is really interesting because now that enables uh, uh, their customers to potentially build operational applications that are customer facing, cu applications that can't go down. If your application goes down, uh, that can, even just for a few minutes, that can mean a lot of money. So uh, they're, they, they continue to execute on that. They're working with all the different uh, Hadoop distribution providers. They're kind of uh, distribution agnostic. Um, but you know, they're doing some good stuff. They're solving a really important problem. I mean, we talk about what Hadoop needs to do to go mainstream, and one of those things is durability. It's got to be able to st stay up. You've got to be confident it's going to stay up, uh, and that's what they're focused on. And that's what they're executing on. So we're getting some, uh, some chats here. I want to thank uh, Bert, John Casaretto, Kit, for, uh, and, and all the other fans in the crowd. It's a very successful crowd. Chat. This is, we like to have it work. Nice threads. Nice threading, guys. Way to go. So um, the question is, is that favorite interview? Of course, Bert likes Avi Mehta. I love, of course, Avi Mehta is like not even an interview. He's like a <laughs> columnist for us now. He's so good. Uh, I like, of course, I loved him. The True Car um, conversation was probably one of my favorites because it was fresh, it was new to us. We first time Cube uh, person, on the, uh, a guest, but he had facts and he had cutting edge data science in action. They had reduction uh, metrics that showed value. He had user experience uh, value proposition, all enabled from the Hadoop data platform and, and open source. Really, really compelling and had a mobile component as well. So I thought that was mm -hmm. the most fresh, interesting new interview. Of course, Actian continues to surprise me. Um, you know, talking to those guys, talking to the CTO, is that the amount of knowledge and, and tooling that they have is pretty impressive. It's like Santa Claus. They like, come with gifts every year with, with, uh, into the show. They have you know, their announcement and then the uh, vector-wise, impressive stuff. So bringing software innovation at the level that they're doing is pretty impressive for a company that's not that well known mm -hmm. in the quote press uh, and whatnot. So mm -hmm. good job for Actian. Yeah, I mean, I, and what, you know, one of my favorites was uh, talking to Jay Rossiter from Yahoo, who runs their uh, platforms and uh, a lot of their analytic uh, workloads, and talking about what the things they're doing to, to help this community. Um, you know, everything that Hortonworks does is tested at scale at Yahoo. Um, you know, they they obviously are, are operating at a scale that most companies uh, don't, uh, but you know, that gives them some really interesting perspectives on on how to keep things running at scale. Um, Kit was saying here on uh, CrowdChat, he really enjoys the Wendisco demo. That was something we did. And you know, they had, they, you know, Mark and the team are holding back that we can do demos. I would, we would have been doing CrowdChat demos all week mm -hmm. if we had the chance uh, and other demos. But great demo, I thought that was pulled off effectively. Um, and they replayed it during lunch and I was walking to get coffee and I saw everyone looking at the screen, the TVs behind us on that demo. Very cool, so uh, the Wendisco was good. Uh, what are the highlights for you, Jeff? Well, it's you know for me just uh, actually not not on the cube, but uh, although we did we did simulcast it, I guess is the right word. Um, you know, I, I was a real honor to be able to go on stage uh, yesterday and interview you know two of the luminaries in this industry, Doug Cutting, uh, really the founder, the father of Hadoop, and Arun Murthy, really the the founder or the father of Hadoop too. Um, so two of the you know the smartest guys at this conference, and and really two guys that are. I mean, without those two guys, we wouldn't be at this show. There wouldn't be a Hadoop Summit. There wouldn't be, there might not be a Hadoop period. So, um, you know, that was, to me, was a real highlight and a real honor. I would agree with you. That was a founding father kind of conversation. And you know what also is fun for me on a personal level is that being so early at the, at the present and creation of the whole, whole, this, this whole industry, seeing these guys when they were regular Joes, and you know, <laughs> and, and they, when, they, when, they, when there was no one really watching the Hadoop space, it was just a bunch of cool people making things happen. Um, because of a vision and a commitment to open source and great innovation around the technology. Um, Amar Awadala, Arun Murthy, Doug Cutting. I mean, these are the guys that have really made things happen and now, massive innovation. So, you know, hats, hats off to all those guys, Jeff. And, uh, you know, this is our fifth year covering big data. So, you know, the industry is only a few years old. Uh, yeah, well, it's, we've collected a lot of data ourselves on big data, so. Been, been fun to watch. Well, Jeff, you know, you get the survey coming out. We had a teaser, that was one of my highlights, is leaking out some of those, those stats and the tidbits and reinforcing some of the questions and validating them with the guests we had on there, get those insights. So I'm looking forward to the survey. Uh, look for that from Wikibon and of course, uh, siliconangle.com, siliconangle.tv. All the videos are going to be on YouTube, youtube.com slash siliconangle. And of course, go check out the crowd chat transcript, which will close down uh, tomorrow morning. We'll leave it open for the rest of the night. Put photos in there, put your favorite videos, crowdchat.net slash Hadoop Summit. We'll be making an announcement on Monday for general availability of that product, so look for that. Um, Jeff, anything else? 
It's I don't know. Here. I think I think we got it all in, John. Um, it's been a great three days. I'm exhausted, but I uh, had a lot of fun too. So. Okay, they're packing us up, and we're going to get going. This is a, the wrap from Hadoop Summit. We'll see you next time.